I personally think that climate change is a matter of priority because it causes a general imbalance to the planet. The most important current global issue is global warming, which is due to greenhouse effect. Ice cap melting, wildfire, loss of biodiversity. Rising sea level, more floods, more hurricanes and typhoons. The forest fires, I would say, they couldn't like just uh, put, on, put it off and all our big uh, forests, they just really burned a lot. The waters are polluted and so even getting access to clean water in Nairobi is quite a challenge. I believe in organization of young people because we have the spirit of change. If we don't do anything and don't make an impact, we will never solve it. That is why it is so much important for young people to be involved in decisions making about environmental issues. If we don't involve, who's gonna be? Create a digital space for different communities uh, where they can see members creating sustainable and more environmental friendly homes. Then we should be more involved in stuff like debates and conferences such as COP26 so we can make our voice heard. To organize seminars, youth training, gatherings, discussions, campaigns and contests. Having platforms whereby youth and the young people can address environmental issues. It has to be truly youth platform, not just to show someone or just create funding in the name of youth. We should put uh, environmental issues in uh, education systems. So that the children understand the meaning of climate change from the very beginning. We are connected like no other generations because of the internet and social media. We just need to spread the words to the people, to the communities, and to the world. I think it's a perfect platform to have access to different workshops. We can use it to spread awareness, stop misinformation. Climate change is not affecting just one or a few regions. The whole world is facing it. So we need to be able before time runs out. We have the spirit of change. Of course we want a better place to live. And young people, this is the time for us to take the necessary actions towards climate change. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the culmination of Add Your Voice to the Global Youth Letter series of events. My name is Kay Batikin, your host for this segment. I'm the manager of Holistic Coalition of the Willing Inc. Gallery Store, or Holy Cow PH, on our social media spots. We're a social enterprise centered on design intervention and product making, focusing on community partnerships. Today's event is titled Signing Up for Climate Action, a creative showcase, because we'll be discussing creative ways to act on the climate crisis, and we'll be asking you to sign the Global Youth Letter. Before that, let's do a quick live check to see where everyone is joining in from today. So say hello in the chat box here in Zoom, that's below the uh, video, or the comment section in Facebook, if you're watching us live on Facebook, comment with the city you're in right now. I'll start. Good evening from Cebu, Philippines. Mayong gabi sa inyong tanan. I see someone from Marikina. Hello, Baguio. Hello, Nueva Ecija and Bukidnon. Hello, Bulacan. Good to see a good number of people from everywhere. Bayambang, hello, Davao. You will have an amazing Davao when you're speaking later on. Bulacan, hello. I'm glad to see everyone coming in. To kick off our program, I would like to ask Ms. Lotus Postrado, Interim Country Director of the British Council in the Philippines, 
to formally welcome us all. Ma'am? Hi, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. We are on the last leg of our Add Your Voice campaign. And for those of you who have followed us throughout, I hope you have already signed the Global Youth Letter. We are very happy to have gotten this far in our campaign as we bring to you the chance to join the global call for climate action, this time by showcasing the initiatives of our indigenous groups and creatives. As some of you might know, the British Council builds connections, understanding and trust between people in the UK and other countries throughout, through arts, culture, education, and the English language. We help young people to gain the skills, confidence, and connections they're looking for to realize their potential and to participate in strong and inclusive communities. A big focus of our work this year is on climate change. Under the Climate Connection Campaign, we bring together people from around the world to share their ideas and perspectives on climate change to help find innovative solutions through global conversations and activities. We have opportunities and advocacies in the lead up to COP26, which is going to be held in the UK in November. COP26 is the United Nations Climate Change Conference where world leaders will discuss commitments in reducing carbon emissions globally. At the British Council, we believe that placing young people at the heart of dialogue and action is the key to tackling climate change. They are the resource for us to invest in, to support a sustainable future as they are the next generation of leaders to take on this fast challenge. Our main youth engagement activity is the, youth, is the Global Youth Letter or GYL. We gathered the views of 8,000 young people in 23 countries, the Philippines included, on climate change. The findings and recommendations were drafted into individual country letters and compiled to inform the Global Youth Letter that will be presented to world leaders at the COP26. Young Filipinos have shared in the GYL the three main effects of climate change for them. One is the cultural productivity, sorry, the agricultural productivity is lower. Second, our summers are so much hotter, our soils are dry. And, and third, we cannot predict the rainy season anymore as rainfall patterns are disturbed. And if you noticed, our typhoons are stronger. During this time in the midst of pandemic, we need to look at climate change and do what we can before it becomes another unmanageable global crisis. And it will if leaders and we do not act right now help raise up the number of signatories to the GYL to 80,000. By signing, you will have the opportunity to add your voice at the Conference of Youth this October 28th and at the COP26. Our local campaign started this October. In less than a month, we have had a total of four events and almost weekly we do this. We have heard amazing efforts of youth organizations, the initiatives and insights of universities and the academe, the innovative undertakings of students and communities, and today, we hear the artistic and diverse of young indigenous peoples groups and creatives in our Philippine version of the Conference of Youth. Indeed, there are more ways than one to take action and no one's sector or organization can fight the, crime, the climate crisis alone. We all try to make what little difference we can as individuals, as a group and as a country. Our efforts would not have been possible without the support of our partners, and we'd like really to thank them. British Embassy Manila, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Department of Science and Technology, Science and um, yeah, Information Institute, ISEC in the Philippines, Online SDG Youth Action Forum, Wayfarers, Min Mindoro Visual Arts, Guardians of Forest, um, Ocean Ripple Philippines, local conference of the youth, and of course, RDB for organizing the Other Voice campaign. For today's event, we would like to thank our speakers from Higanon Youth Community, Guardians of the Forest, Kids for Kids, Comicet, Philippine Women's College of, the, of Davao, oh, I forgot mentioning the names, of course, um, 
let me do that again. So we, we have a speaker as well, Grinky Malo Ai and Michelle Jean Pihunan, Daniel Australia, Natsha Tangkutko, Paolo Harris, Emmy English, Yana of Russia, and specific individuals that we would like to thank who have joined us in the last uh, three events as broadcast journalist and climate defender, Atom Arolio, and our host today uh, from Holy Cow Philippines, Manager Kay Batikin. You have to stay until the end of the program because not only we will all sign the GYL together, our DV also has surprises for those who will sign. So stay and watch out for it. It is truly in inspiring to know that young people we have reached and the partners that we have worked throughout this campaign do care enough to act on climate crisis. Today is the culmination of our campaign, but it is not the end of our climate action. Please enjoy the program and let's get started. Good evening. Thank you very, very much for that, Ms. Lotus. Now, we've been talking about the Global Youth Letter, and I bet you are all wondering, what is this all about? The Global Youth Letter on Climate Action is the call to action from young people worldwide directly addressing the leaders attending COP26, the 26th UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland, which will be held this November, 2021. Drawn from research results, it serves as a collective statement to move leaders and policymakers into addressing young people's concerns on climate change and bring about climate action. As the letter is read, Please do consider adding your voice to the plea. The link is right there in the chat box. You will find it underneath the video if you're watching us on Zoom and our team will be pasting it on the comments section if you're watching us live on Facebook. Your signatures will be counted only until midnight of today, 22nd of October. So don't put off signing the letter. To read us the Global Youth Letter of Young People from the Philippines, please welcome journalist and climate activist, Mr. Atom Araulo. Friends, the Global Youth Letter. Hello, everyone. Uh, magandang gabi sa inyong lahat at maraming salamat sa paanyaya para maging bahagi ng ating pagtitipon ngayong araw. Uh, I hope that the following letter is um, useful and inspiring to people who are going to read it and going to hear it uh, in this gathering. So the following letter and accompanying data represent the views and perspectives of young people in the Philippines. It is a collective statement of all those who participated in the Global Youth Letter on Climate Action Research in the Philippines and can be used as a starting point for leaders and policymakers to understand how to address young people's concerns in relation to climate change and how they can use this untapped potential to bring about climate action. We hope that the following letter inspires both young people and decision makers across the Philippines and beyond to work together to find sustainable solutions to climate action. Let me begin. Dear COP26 leaders, we, the young people of the Philippines, are here to share our aims and aspirations for the future of our country and our planet. We comprise 7,107 small islands, making us the second largest archipelago in the world. We have wonderful natural landscapes, from active volcanoes to serene beaches and coastlines. And we want to safeguard our beautiful country for future generations. Those who contributed to this collective statement represent the unheard voice in the climate conversation. Three quarters of us are female and just over 50% are from the rural areas. We are from all corners of the Philippines and have different levels of education and employment. Yet 95% of us are deeply concerned about climate change and we are here to collectively call for climate action. How climate change affects us. From the north to the south, we are starting to feel the effects of climate change, and more than 90% of us already feel it's impacting our lives. The three main effects of climate change we see are, number one, decreased agriculture productivity. Number two, 
dry seasons becoming more frequent and more severe. Number three, disturbed rainfall patterns. By participating in this research, we've become more familiar with the UN Sustainable Development Goals and better informed about COP26. For us, the three most important sustainable development goals are, number one, SDG4, quality education, number two, SDG1, no poverty, and number three, SDG3, good health and well-being. What's more, about a quarter of us believe climate change will be the biggest threat to our country in the future, so we are here to show you how we can work together to find solutions. Our commitment to climate action. While 77% of us believe we have the skills to address climate change, we also know that young people have far too often been ignored and any meaningful spaces for active participation are closed. Only 60% of us have ever participated in a climate change awareness session. And this needs to change if we are to really reduce the impact of climate change. With climate change impacting everybody's lives, we know that policymakers and civil society organizations can't deal with the problem alone, which is why they need to be more proactive and include us in meaningful ways so together we can develop sustainable climate solutions. Leaders and policymakers, we need your help to remove hurdles to participation, which include little or no access to knowledge resources, limited or no community level initiatives to engage youth in climate action and insufficient role of the media in creating awareness. As a diverse group, we are more than committed to act and to lead on climate action, but we can't do this alone and neither can you. But you do have the power to mainstream youth climate action to increase access to knowledge and skills development through social media and other platforms and to provide opportunities for young people to co-develop and sustain climate solutions. Together, the young people of the Philippines can become a symbol of hope for others around the world, but only if you include us in plans and actions to address the major environmental challenges facing our country and our planet. Our voices. All young people must be aware of climate change because some didn't take this issue seriously. Awareness is very important Ignorance will lead us to a dangerous situation in the future. Youth should join or be involved in environmental groups or environmental activities. Our parting message, we need world leaders who are willing to listen to young people. We could do so much more with the proper encouragement, support and recognition. So let's keep pushing for a brighter future. And our call to action, add your voice to the global youth letter today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Atom. This evening is our last event for the Global Youth Letter Series. And in our last hora, we want to showcase creative networks and initiatives by youth groups from different parts of the Philippines. Just as the climate issue is complex and multifaceted, these brilliant initiators tackle different aspects that ultimately seek to solve its various problems. You are free to send in your questions even while our speakers are still on. You can do that by clicking the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen if you're watching us on Zoom, or you can key it in in the comments section if you're watching us live on Facebook. Kindly tag the speaker you mean to address so that our team can give it to them and the speaker um, that you mentioned, we'll be able to answer them either in the comment section or in the chat area. If we have time after the showcase, we will pick one or two or three to answer live. Our first speaker is from the Manobo Youth Community, the Guardians of the Forest, represented by Daniel Estrella, son of the late Datu Bunanat. Daniel is a proud Manobo, and his mother, Baye Merlin, is the daughter of the legendary Supreme Dato Tagleon. Together, they aim to protect their 500,000 hectare ancestral land through eco-conscious harvesting and by creating products that benefit their tribe and the community. Friends, Danielle. Hello, 
everyone, my name is Daniel, son of Dato Buranat and by Marilyn of the Manobo tribe, La Paz, Agusan del Sur. I hope you guys are doing well and get yourself vaccinated. So let me begin with the projects that we have started. We have planted Valcata trees, corns, coffee, and the native rice, which we call upland rice. We have items like headgear, bags, and so on, usually based on the tradition of the tribe, especially the color combination and the design. And we also use the available materials found in our area. We do believe that there is nothing wrong in using and utilizing our natural resources for the betterment and improvement of the tribe without damaging the environment but protecting it instead. Years ago, um, illegal logging is rampant in our area. Uh, this is done by different individuals for their personal gain and profit. But with the consistent effort and bravery of my parents, um, we were able to preserve what we have right now. This project started with a purpose and that purpose is to protect and preserve our natural environment. It all started as a dream and slowly we take action to realize everything. Dato Bunanat keep on telling us to understand what is happening right now and to prepare ourselves for the future. I personally believe that children should be educated and be knowledgeable in protecting and preserving our natural resources. And we, the Manobo youth, are showing them the way so they could be great as what we are always wanted. Um, we also communicate and keep our connections with the government. They provided us seedlings and fertilizers for these projects to prosper. It is a hard battle to stand for climate change. Keeping the environment healthy and safe is a tough job, but it is really important for this is the future of the generation next to us. It might be tiring, but let's keep on doing what is better for our environment because of course we are part of it. I am proud to be a Manobo and I encourage everyone, especially the youth, to take actions before it's too late. Hand in hand, we can make a change for the better and for the preservation of our environment. Thank you everyone. God bless and mabuhay. Thank you for that, Danielle. Next, we're featuring a video produced by the Mati Manibay Siboleg Languyod Higaonon tribal community who make Region 10, Northern Mindanao, their home. Mamasila is an acronym of the four sectors comprised of Barangay Mati and Sitio Manibay from Barangay Apuskahoy within the municipality of Claveria and Sitio Siboleg, Barangay Lunotan, as well as City Olanguyod, Barangay Libertidad of Ginguong City. Their group was organized mainly to delineate the ancestral boundaries and have it officially recognized by the government under IPRA laws. Several threats undermine their efforts in effectively protecting and conserving the resources within their territories, which cover Sumagaya and Balatukan mountain ranges. In this video, we will hear from Michelle Jean Pinuhan, a youth leader of the Higaonon Youth Community. Now, we have members of the Higaonon Youth Community in this event. They're with you right now. So send in your questions, again, through the Q&A option on your screen. 
which you will find when you're watching us in Zoom or in the comment section if you're watching live on Facebook so that our team can pass them on to the members of the community. Now for the video. By the Philippine government. In this way, we are able to protect it. Since my father is one of the elders in our community and my sister is the chairperson of Mama Sila, it sort of follows that I help them. My father is respected for his knowledge about forest and his leadership in our community. He is a kind and generous father, but he is strict when it comes to our commitment for the development of the community, preservation of our forest, culture, and tradition. My father encouraged me to join my first enterprise development activity in the early part of 2019. The activity was all about product development wherein we process cinnamon pastry using our very own cinnamon resource as flavoring. It was fun because several other young people were there, my cousins and friends. And it is exciting because aside from being a volunteer, I personally like the business industry and I consider the community experiences as an opportunity to learn. I was also asked to conduct a taste test for our cinnamon bread number bed of non-timber forest products oriented me and my cousin how to conduct the taste test and how to use a sensor test form. The unforgettable part of conducting the taste test was giving free samples to local officials who happened to be dining in a local cafe, a target outlet for our pastry product. One of the officials liked the cinnamon bread so much and I did not expect that he would cooperate in answering my question to complete the form. He was very helpful considering that I am just a student and he was a well-known politician in Misamis Oriental. The sensory test was quite successful and we were able to visit several cafes and conduct the test. And the result was, most of the people we asked like our product in that the sensor test result showed that we have a good product. Another cool experience as a youth volunteer was attending and participating in webinars and international that I think this is my second time attending an international webinar. In our community, youth are often enlisted by our people's organization to produce video materials to document our indigenous knowledge system and practices or IKSP. Just like the video we did in partnership with the Bukidnon State University which shows our traditional way of foraging cinnamon from the forest and the importance of the forest to our culture and livelihoods. Often we are tasked to do the video recording and some of us even do the editing because they used as what they say are more, are more adept in using digital devices such as cell phones as cameras and laptops for editing. Having Philippine-wide learning sessions related to traditional food, enterprise, indigenous people's rights with other indigenous young people like me is a, also a cool experience. I get to meet and learn from and share things with youth from Palawan, Sierra Madre, and Raklan. Aware that this experience is not common for other youth like me. I feel grateful because it is a privilege not everyone is given this privilege to attend this webinar for free and the loads are given. In addition, I feel that I am part of important learning process because we talk a lot about issues faced by other indigenous communities, issues that are related to enterprise development and management, IP rights, among others. Sometimes I have to admit that the issues are quite overwhelming for a youth like me, but I also feel privileged because I get to participate and represent my community and I'm able to share our concern and issues. Sometimes I get tired and become distracted with my studies. Because of these activities during this pandemic, during this pandemic, we do homeschooling to start learning on our own, studying all by ourselves, learning the lessons all by yourself without teachers and classmates physically around to share your homework with or that to ask and clarify lessons with is quite challenging and exhausting. Plus, the community involvement will sometimes drain me. 
honestly, couple of times I wanted badly to bail out from all of this community involvement because I would rather focus on my study, just live like any normal kid does. I realized that this ancestral domain belongs to us and the future of this ancestral domain is in the hands of young people like me, my ancestors, my father, my elders who, who are behind all of this sacrifice a lot in order to pass on to us the right the rights and the chance to claim what belongs to us. Thank you for that. And I hope you send in your questions um, and your inquiries. Now we're getting people asking to be connected to our speakers and our youth groups and our team is on it. Okay, just be sure to have your name and the speaker in question that you'd like to connect to and our team will work very hard to get you that link. This is very important because it's not only them, it's you as well, it's us. Our next presenter is currently organizing the Tambayayong Dabawenyo Creative Hub Network, a consortium of higher educational institutions piloting culture-based creative enterprise hubs for social good in the Davao region. The hubs comprise academics, researchers, and community development organizers. They claim to, their aim is to foster a sustainable ecosystem of industry creatives. Working themes are focused on indigenous food, farming, textiles, arts and crafts, and emerging homegrown technology, like what you saw in the videos earlier from our IP representatives. Please welcome Head, Philippine Women's College of Davao Center for Innovation and Social Ventures, and my fellow Creative Innovation Program alumni, Emmy Anglis. Mayong gabi, Emmy. Maing gabi ikay, maing gabi sa ato ang tanan, madayaw, gikan ngan hi sa Davao. Um, thank you for having us in this uh, session this evening. And um, briefly, I would like to share with you the kind of initiatives and activities that um, our um, school in particular um, have really been um, or have engaged with uh, even before the pandemic. And uh, tonight, I, I will briefly share with you the kind of intersections um, in terms of the advocacies and also the initiatives that uh, the school in all its units or across all units from basic education to tertiary education have done so far. And um, well, before the, the, the pandemic, um, the, the PWC basic education uh, department um, was really proactive um, in, in, in with its uh, green now, an environmental advocacy that brought to um, the, the, a wider consciousness or awareness to the students in terms of their accountability and responsibility in taking care of the Davao Gulf. Um, the coastline, of course, is lined by mangrove forest. And um, one of the, the major activities was actually to take care of these mangrove forests. But um, during the pandemic, uh, we were able to like uh, realize that there's more that we can do. And um, we've uh, always capitalized on education as a viable tool uh, to be able to further this um, advocacy and not only advocacy, but also our call to action. And um, it's very important that we all go back to the, the wisdom of the earth. And um, what I'm trying to refer to is actually an indigenous wisdom because Davao city in itself is uh, very diverse. We are in fact, the only city in the Philippines which, which has the, the, the most number of tribes. We have 11. Six are Moro, group, I mean, they are Moro groups, and uh, five are Lumads. And uh, that diversity um, uh, collectively um, ma made up a culture that, uh, you know, um, encouraged us and inspired us to build it into creativity, but also circularity, so that um, we're able to package a kind of education that would um, somehow ensure the, the kind of awareness and understanding, especially for the young people. 
Um, and this year, uh, we really made sense with that uh, when PWC of Davao finally institutionalized uh, the, the kind of concept. Um, uh, and, and of course, this kind of engagement, which for I think for more than six decades, we've really been very much um, uh, engaged with. So uh, we uh, crafted this paradigm we call uh, CHI or CHI plus innovation streams. And the uh, CHI there stands for culture, heritage, identity, which is actually the bedrock of innovation, um, optimizing science, technology, research, entrepreneurship, education, and arts management for sustainability. And um, uh, with that, we also institutionalize um, a, a management enterprise program that's mandatory to all students, regardless of what field they are in, in college. And uh, uh, this is, we call this the IME or the Institutional Management Enterprise Program. Um, early on, this was um, inspired by the this is the business concept of the, the institution which I think um, has already been crafted some 10 years ago, but it was loosely implemented through this thesis to business framework. And this year um, we, we committed to, to really strengthen this concept and um, of course highlight and strengthen the social impact of all these enterprises. And the one that you're seeing now on screen is uh, Wilson Limon, uh, whose thesis eventually became a success story for, uh, for a retail enterprise um, both online and on site. And uh, right now he's very much engaged and um, um, very much involved with different indigenous communities, not only in Davao region, but also in the neighboring uh, provinces. And this concept um, is very much um, uh, guided by contextual frameworks, uh, like for example, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the, the, the bottom line, the triple bottom line approach, uh, designed to improve life compass and also fair trade practices and all of this um, uh, I, I suppose are, are, are ensuring that the kind of um, inclusivity but also sustainability among the enterprises that are being um, encouraged uh, with, with students um, in their theses but also to be able to transcend the thesis into real life businesses. So with this best practice um, we also felt that we need to share so last year, we organized the Tambayayong Hub Network. It's a consortium of uh, five, I mean, six um, higher educational institutions in the Davao region. And um, we helped them organize their own creative enterprise hubs. So thank you to the British Council for a grant sharing fund initially, and also um, additional um, funding from the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, and early on with the CHED Institutional Development and Innovation Grant. So we were able to uh, come up with capacity building program uh, to help our different local and state colleges and universities organize their own creative hubs. And um, in, in, in this period of a year during the pandemic, we're able to organize or bring together 23 resource persons in different online learning sessions, uh, focus group sessions, boot camp sessions. And uh, very importantly, we're able to reach out to more than 4,000 participants via Zoom and Microsoft Teams um, across all the events that were um, conducted during the first or during the one year uh, of this pandemic. And um, this year, we, we really decided to focus in um, strengthening the, the different uh, creative enterprise hubs that we started with the, the, the five local state colleges and universities. Um, of course, PwC there is leading the, the, the group, um, but uh, we, we continue to, to uh, strengthen as well no? our connection and our, um, our collaboration with the Commission in Higher Education. And of course, with the, with the, with the DACUN or the Dava Colleges and Universities Network, and also the Association of Public and Private Schools, Colleges, and Universities in Region 11. So we ensure that you know, this initiative, this advocacy, this network will continue to grow um, as, you know, as envisioned. And um, we, we further this network you know, to even include the, the education sector of the Philippine Fashion Coalition, um, the Food Processing Innovation Centers of DTI and DOST, and um, also uh, very importantly, we partnered with a uh, World Fair Trade Organization in Asia to help um, the communities and the schools um, be aware of fair trade practices, since um, almost everyone is into creative enterprise. And um, 
with the second phase now, uh, the, the, the PWC of DAVA with its IME or the Institutional Management Enterprise, we have um, really made sure that the culture-based creative entrepreneurship for social good is the, is the rallying platform to be able to realize the different themes that the different schools have started in their respective provinces. Like for example, for homegrown technology and processes in Davao del Norte, they're very much involved right now with um, banana fiber weaving. For Davao de Oro, it's indigenous food. Um, the, the food of the different tribes like the Kagan, the, the, the Manobo in, in Pantukan. And um, also uh, in Davao Oriental, it's upland rice farming. And uh, for Davao del Sur, it's the Bagobo Tagabawa weaving. Uh, they call this textile um, inabal. And uh, for Davao Occidental, it's the traditional um, indigenous um, arts and crafts of the different um, tribes in, in, in the province. And uh, we, we, we all realize that uh, while we in the, in the key city um, have this um, uh, uh, interest and um, also a uh, passion uh, to be able to connect with, uh, with, uh, with the indigenous communities, it is but um, important that we go back to the provenance of all of this and learn the wisdom of, of, of the indigenous communities through um, higher educational institutions are actually situated in, in, the, in the specific areas or provinces in the region. So with this, the climate emergency is really critical. It's a head call and uh, we all need to, to take action. And uh, very important is that we know we, we, we future proof because um, uh, this is not only the disruption, the pandemic right now is, that we are expecting, but of course the climate change, the climate emergency is, is really um, obvious. I mean, it's obviously um, rocking um, all corners and we need to, to respond uh, proactively. So with that, we need to go back to indigenous wisdom and learn how um, our, um, our indigenous communities have actually managed the earth. Um, and uh, th there's really so much to learn from, from, the, from the technology, from the systems and the practices that they have. And um, very importantly also is to understand that we need to localize all of these actions. We cannot, or we, will, we may not be able to change the world one time, big time, but the little efforts that we have if all put together will definitely make a, a wonderful change. And um, of course, with that, we would like to invite all of you to add your voice to the Global Youth Letter so that together we will be looking at, uh, 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 at uh, how do you call this? Uh, um, we will be looking at a different perspective and um, uh, bring more action to, to, to the kind of um, vision that we have. Uh, it was said that if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And uh, we're, we're very um, excited to, to, to see how this will go from here onwards. So thank you so much. And good evening once again from Davao. That was amazing. I mean, what you're doing right now is absolutely inspiring. And what moves me is that sense of reclaiming. We thought we lost it, but we were actually managing the earth way better than we were, man were imagine managing it rather right now. So there's so much for us to relearn, to reclaim. So thank you. Thank sure. you for that, Emmy. Thank you. Thank you Closing. as well. Okay. Closing the first part of our showcase are our friends from El Coy, Pilipinas. 2021 delegation. El Coy Pilipinas, or Local Conference of Youth, is the most comprehensive meeting of Filipino youth to discuss pressing climate and environmental issues plaguing the country. The main output of El Coy Pilipinas is the national and regional youth statements drafted by, uh, by our youth delegates from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. With us are in El Noya, a grade 12 student of the University of San Carlos from Cebu City, and Cromwell Cruz, a third year BS biology student from the Isabella State University, both core drafters of the National Youth Statement. They will be sharing with us Elcoy's advocacy and initiative. They will also be awarding our chosen creative expression afterwards. Welcome, Inel and Cromwell. Hi, um, good evening everyone. So let's start. Next slide, please. So what's the motivation behind Elcoy? So basically the local conference of youth. So the local conference 
also known as Elkoy, is the Allies Koi in support of the Koi 16 that will happen this month in Glasgow. It's important for the Filipino youth to come present the demand of the Filipino to be integrated as a global youth statement and then will be submitted to COP 2016 to 26. So the Philippine delegation will then bring it to the negotiating table on top of integrating it to our global youth statement. So Elkoy basically, it aims to be a space to boost youth climate action in hopes of making it more active and create an input into our international conferences. So it represents a national and localized version of the international COI, which takes place immediately before the COP2016, which is an annual UN climate conference. How about you, Koya Kromwell? What else is the motivation? All right. Um, for me, my take is that in the face of, of the climate crisis, we want action. We need concrete and sustainable climate action because it is already our present and our future on the line. Elko is, is, is but a step towards realizing that those calls to action are heeded by the ones responsible for change. Uh, and uh, what we hope for in our national youth statement is for it to to normalize the inclusion of youth in decision making for climate action. Uh, basically, the statement's objective is for it to be recognized and utilized by, uh, by stakeholders to address climate related issues on, on governance, on corporate accountability, on human rights, ecosystems, food and water security, and education at the local to national level. So let's talk about like the process or the highlights of making our national youth statement. The national youth statement went through so many phases so that it can be called a comprehensive list of demands and observations that the youth have personally written. So first, the Elkoy delegates participated in four capacity building and um, climate change adaptation and mitigation ecosystems, social issue, and climate crisis, and then just transition and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and the climate crisis. We heard from speakers all around the Philippines, their works, their concerns, their lifelong passion that taught us so many things in the current society today. And after that, we did thematic areas for each region, which means delegates from that region were divided into subgroups that worked on a thematic area and that leads up to their own regional statement and finally the national youth statement. We really made sure that every individual, every delegate had the opportunity to voice out what they've been seeing, what they've been thinking, and what they want to be heard. We did consultation sessions and weekends just to consolidate the statements, ask opinions from other professionals, and of course, the late night meetings with the core drafters just to make sure that what we're writing truly speaks out the youth's demand. This took us almost a three month process just to finalize our national youth statement. We ended with six key themes that were highlighted, and that is good governance, corporate accountability, human rights, ecosystems, food and water security, and lastly, education and information dissemination. All right, so to, to iterate, our national youth statement is it's, it's not totally different from the global youth statement. Uh, uh, likewise, we're calling for the same action to the national and global leaders. The key takeaway for us is this, that climate crisis is an issue to all. This includes uh, the youth, tayong mga kabataan. Likewise, we are given the responsibility to to address it as uh, to uh, we're, we're given the responsibility to address it as as uh, as the generation that will um that will inherit the current state of our planet. And uh, interestingly, in commemoration of uh, these youth initiated push for climate action delegates of uh, Elkoy Filipinas actually created a very uh, interesting video tribute to showcase the reality the reality of climate crisis and of course the role of young people in addressing it 
Once upon a time, on July 2021, we, a group of young Filipino change makers, joined together hand in hand from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. We grew bigger, stronger. We thought that it was time we talked about this as a nation. Our future is at risk, ecosystem degradation, climate change denial, health threats, and injustices everywhere. Everyone is affected. The greatest threat to the planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Now a generation won't stand by and do nothing, don't us. We're here united, calling to our leaders, the people in power. We've done more than enough to inform you of what the issue is, why it came to this, and how we can resolve it. The time has come for our dreams to be heard. They will not be pushed aside and turned into your own cause. You won't listen. We've tried and tried to say what's on our mind. You should have known. Our future is in our hands. Hayaan natin kumilos ang kabataan para sa kinabukasan. Pasagdi ang mga kabataan unan ng muliho alang ugma. Tagaan natin sang chance ang pamatan on makitbahin para sa ikaayo sang aton buas damlag. Ipanibala ang aksyon karing kayakan para keng kinabukasan. Hayaan ang mga kakusan sa pagiwag para sa kinabukasan. Our future is in our hands. Let the youth take action for tomorrow. We. The Filipino youth believe in our power to ignite positive change for the future. Kabataang Pilipino, bayani ngayon, bayani ang kinabukasan. Alright, and uh, with that, let let this be just just what uh, just but one statement of many. So much more of what we the youth can act for climate. Uh, at this juncture, uh, I guess let's, uh, without further ado, we now welcome uh, one of our uh, Elkoy mentees, uh, Marinel Obaldo, the Philippine Country Coordinator yeah. for UN Koi 16 and one of the co-organizers of Elkoy who will be awarding the top submission. Thank you so much, Cromwell and Enel, and I am so, so proud of you and thank you so much for Present, representing Alcoy Filipinas. Thank you to British Council. And thank you to all young people that been doing their part in the climate crisis. We are bringing your voice to the COI 16 and COP26. And for those who have exp expressed their ideas and views through cre creativity and joined the voices of climate action. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are happy to be presenting the top submissions RAB APAC has picked their favorites and we have a token for you. In just a few seconds will be the top entries on screen. If our awardees are here, please say hi in the chat section. Okay, so our first awardee is Anthony. Okay. Anthony Into with his photo entry entitled Teaching the Next Generation to Care. In Anthony's photo, the old woman guides her grandson as they transplant mangroves along the shoreline of Biri Island, Northern Samar. Mangroves protect coastal areas from erosion and storm surge. They also store large amounts of carbon, which helps slow climate change. And let's give them a round. Let's give Anthony a round of applause. So thank you so much, Anthony, and congratulations. Our next awardee is, uh, okay, <laughs> is uh, Brian Elona with his poster, The Earth Now and to the Future. According to Brian, this poster art shows the woman embracing the whole earth as a symbolical expression, while on the left side it shows the people are working together um, to plant more trees on the mountains and valleys. Ayan, thank you so much and congratulations to the both of you. And um, congratulations again and back to you, Kay. Thank you very much. Inel and Cromwell and Miss Marino. 
Your journey in the UK as representatives of the Philippines in the Conference of Youth inspires us all. Thank you for awarding our first winners. Now we move to our second group of presenters. Once again, place your questions in the chat box if you're watching us on Zoom or in the comments section if you're watching us on Facebook and tag the speakers you want the answers from. Our team will be with you shortly. If you want to connect, just let us know. Our team is on it. Next, Paolo Heras is a filmmaker, author, and entrepreneur, best known as the co-founder of Comicep.org and festival director of Philippine International Comics Festival. He is currently out of the country attending an art fair, proudly representing the Philippines. But he has a message for all of us. Let's hear from Paolo Heras. Good day, everyone. I'm Paolo Heras, the president and co-founder of Comicet.org. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization based in the Philippines, and uh, it's put up by comics creators for the Filipino comics community. During the pandemic, uh, it gave us an opportunity to take a pause. That's why we activated BAR as a publisher. Uh, we organized the Philippine International Comics Festival, or PICOF, and uh, we started to reach out beyond our borders and we met uh, other other organizations like us and one of them is the lakes international comic art festival based in the uk and uh when we when we found about uh when we found out about the the creative commission's project on climate change me and julie tate who is the festival director of LICAF, um, said, you know, let's apply for it and see how comics can help change the world. And that's why we have uh, 10, years to, to, 10 Years to Save the World. Uh, it's a comic book anthology that features um, 10 creators, uh, 10 comics creators, five from the UK and five from the Philippines, that each tackled a climate change is climate crisis issue. Uh, I'll share my screen so you can see the work that our creators did. Okay, so 10 comics, 10 uh, climate crisis issues, and one world, one comic book anthology. So the first uh, of the five uh, creators from the Philippines is Budget Tan and, and Kajok Baldissimo of Trece. And they chose um, how water pollution and water plastics can uh, affect the various creatures in, uh, in, in the waters, in our own waters. And uh, although this is a fictional piece uh, that fits in with the Tressa world, the sentiments are still the same uh, on how to, on the need, uh, the immediate need to start protecting our, our own waters from tr trash and pollution. The second one is Emiliano Campilan, uh, who is also, like Tressa, an award winning creator from the Philippines. And her work here. Um, her work here demonstrates the the global issues that affect that affect our local uh, environmental issues. So it's it's highly political, but at the end of the day, it's still a personal story that affects how land uh, is being used and misused by by our policymakers or those who are in power. And the next creator is Kevin Eric, Eric Raimundo also known as Tarantadong Kalbo. Um, he is uh, very popular on social media and he activated during the pandemic. More, uh, he, he became more proactive uh, in creating comics that was demonstrating um, the dissatisfaction of the government response on the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, the his topic, uh, his climate crisis issue is... Um, the West Philippine Sea. So it's very controversial uh, because this is the island uh, that China is trying to claim as their own. So as you can see, it um, it doesn't just, it's not really just about land. It's what is in between these uh, lands. And that's the water, uh, the, the natural resources that uh, are within, uh, within our, uh, the Philippines' waters. So it explains it um, that there are a lot of um, corals, uh, other, well, the corals also protect 
our own shores, but also all of our uh, the marine life as well, and um, and the very controversial man-made island that was put up. So um, it also involves as soon as Kevin researched uh, about his topic, it opened up more and more issues. So this is how several countries uh, throw trash in within these waters. And um, and not just trash, but even untreated human waste. So that uh, in ten years we'll all be in deep shit. Yeah. So Manic Sobrera chose water too. Um, it's it's very interesting that the creators of the from the Philippines chose water related uh, climate change issues. So uh, his, his work uh, demonstrated also um, how, how it affects, how, how our dirty waters affect our own living, our everyday living. So, and last but not, not the least is Ren Galeno. She is a, uh, a very young creator who um, is based in Davao City and uh, her work uh, it's called I Pray You're Born With Gills. And this shows, um, this comic book talks about um, the apparent fear or anxiety of having kids uh, with uh, in the future because what kind of future, what kind of planet Earth would they have by then? So that child, that soon, that future child would have to be born with gills so that that child will survive the our dirty polluted waters um and maybe not maybe the gills aren't enough but maybe it would need more um uh, mutated parts <laughs> to survive not just the dirty water but also the air and the land and um at the end of the day it always goes back on who is in control who is uh the cause of all of these effects because when you get it at the root cause uh, that is what can help save the world and it's not only in the hands of of everyday people like these creators but also the hands of our policymakers. so this um this anthology uh, i just presented the five the five creators from the philippines this anthology is uh, meant to be uh used at the COP26. You can check out the website 10 years to save the world.com to check out the other five creators from from the UK. And um, interestingly enough, um, most of them tackled issues on land. And um, and it's very interesting uh, because I think what is what is really truly important was identified by all of these creators. Um, maybe that's something that is cultural, uh, something that is uh, immediately cultural in terms of the crisis that they could or that they are experiencing. And, um, and that's why it's important to, to uh, use our, our talents and our skills uh, for the better. And that's, what, uh, that's why, why Comicat and Lightaf is very proud and, and, uh, and happy. To, to work on this project together to make a bigger Im impact uh, and help do our part in saving the world. So I end with a close with a call to action, add your voice to the Global Youth Letter. So not everybody is a comics creator, not everybody is a storyteller, but every voice matters. So add your voice to the Global Youth Letter today. Let's all do our part in, uh, in saving the world. Thank you, Paolo, and all the best to your endeavors. Next up, she was 15 years old in 2015 when she and her sister co-founded Kids for Kids Philippines, an organization that empowers the youth as foundations of our nation. In 2018, they co-founded Tayo, a multidisciplinary creative agency which uses design as a tool for positive ecological and civic transformation. Please welcome Natasha Tanhutko. 
Hi, I am Tasha. I am the co-founder of Kids for Kids in Tayo. And today I will be talking to you guys quickly about how you can get involved as young people. So the biggest question we always get is exactly where do we begin? So here are three simple steps of how you're, you'll, you'll be able to discover it on your own how you can be a part of the change everyone's making. So again, the world's young people are the world's greatest source of hope and why young people are in the front lines of change. Also realizing that um, when I grew up, I was really taught about the value of our culture, especially through my Lolo, who became a national artist for architecture. He always said that we must love our country because it's the only one we have. And I believe this has something that is something hard to do, but has kept me really going. And so six years ago, with a group of five kids and a network of our friends and one common goal of really just to give back, we were able to give 1,600 kids proper malnourishment through a fun run called Takpo. It was just a fundraiser that me and my sister and our friends decided to do. And we realized that this was such an amazing opportunity for us to really create a platform for young people to make a difference. And so it was never about beginning an organization, really. It was just always about seeing how we could change the way giving back was presented to young people and how they could be involved in conversations, too. So Kids for Kids really aims to empower the youth to power the nation. What we really want to do is show people that young people are capable of concrete action and really not just there for inspiration, but really truly to create systematic change. And in order to do this, this isn't just working with other young people, but also people, professionals, and those in the front lines that have already created a legacy of their own and how us as young people can continue it. And so what we do is we collaborate a lot. We work with young people, especially understand communities, see how we could give back in the best way possible, and of course, our planet as well. So our projects of Kids for Kids, we act as a breeding ground for young change makers in order for them to find how they can turn their passion or things that they just like doing every day into purpose. So one of our main events called Kamalayan, which means awareness in Filipino, was our art festival for awareness. We began um, in 2016 when the conversation on climate crisis wasn't seen in casual conversations. And what we wanted to do was to simplify it and bring it down into a level of understanding where everyone would want to be a part of that conversation. And so we started Kamalayan through art and through culture and music. We realized we could bring together community for change and we raised funds for our indigenous people. This was an amazing event to see and now it was also seeing how we could take young people into a more formalized or professional platform. So we started doing um, different talks and workshops and we had a room full of 200 um, young people listen to talks about biodiversity and we realized if people, if young people were willing to listen to all these different great speakers talk about marine biodiversity but aren't willing to sit through 30 minutes of science class, there's definitely a huge gap in our education system. And so we sought out really to figure out how we could use education and start to teach and make young people connect with one another in order to create change happen faster. So the first thing really was realizing that we have to make things relatable to our generation and make our friends even understand why we're making this change in the first place and how this change can be fun. And so successfully, we were able to kind of do that. I mean, our journey isn't over, but we have seen so much of its amazing outcomes because we've made things relatable to other young people. So change is really holistic. So when people ask us again, what exactly are we doing? There's so many different things that Kids for Kids is doing. What exactly are you guys doing? And our simplest form is always saying we advocate for a child's right to a safe environment. It's because a safe environment is interconnected with everything that we hope the world to be like. And Sally, the world we're growing up in is like this. This definitely isn't safe, neither is it safe for our planet. And so we have to figure out how exactly did we get here? And that's the second step on seeing where you can fit into the conversation on climate. Is really seeing personally your history and your country's history and how exactly you, you got into this situation. For us in the Philippines, definitely we knew how to live with and for our land. Sadly, when um, we were colonized, this changed. We were then driven by consumerism and instant things ended up becoming instant failures because then all of a sudden we weren't given the choice anymore. And so the whole goal now is to uncolonize the system and really understand how our countries can come together and I guess develop a world wherein we once again remember who we 
were. And so that's why we always like talking about this quote that I found somewhere saying that indigenous people are very scientific. It's just that their science includes the heart. And it, it's not just pertaining to indigenous people, but even young people and even women and all these different sectors that are rarely talked about lead with both head and heart. And so that's why we have to allow young people to lead solutions. We have to talk to young people and other young people as well. And we have to be given a platform in order to show we can make this difference. And finding this platform is quite difficult, but that's why we started Kids for Kids. And so one of our main projects now is Kapulo Anang Kabataan. And it's a huge project when we're trying to connect an entire generation back to our natural world, which, which seems like a quite photo order, but Kapulo Anang Kabataan means um, archipelago of the youth, um, translated into English, and just like a collection of islands, like an archipelago. We are a collection, we are creating a collection of different projects wherein we want to integrate different green spaces, physical spaces for young people to connect back to the natural world, whether it be a mangrove plant plantation in Del Carmen or whether it be an urban um, garden in Manila. The whole point really is one, use your generation, talking not just about sustainability, but seeing how people will be able to have enough for the future and educating young people on the ecosystem itself. So how exactly can we educate and, and talk to young people about action and not just learning about things? And of course, this is all really towards this one goal of youth and community funded champion um, green and blue spaces. Understand how, how redesigning simple spaces like an empty lot can become a community garden and provide food security. So the whole idea really is to bring back these green spaces that we once had and to ha bring back ideas about the natural ecosystems that we have to talk about and especially relate them to young people, make them involved in the conversation, whether it be about bees or the color of something, see how you can involve young people in every step of the way. Because we really want to talk about how education for local communities is so important to foster local stories and local solutions. So for example, with our project we're doing in Shergao, what we're trying to do is seeing how the knowledge of the people and of the place can be transformed into a livelihood program. It's again understanding that value of culture and seeing how that can come to play in really restoring and protecting our natural world and connecting generations back to it as well. And so it's really important to think global and act local. Even if we see all the amazing solutions out there, we have to be able to come back home and have the courage to understand how we could really localize our solutions. So we are aware of this, but we definitely need more action and tell our leaders also that we aren't here just for inspiration, but definitely for action. And so again, make things relatable. Talk about protection at the localized level. Talk about their history, talk about their conservation at a cultural level, understand where you're from. And of course, lastly, give young people a platform. Talk to your friends, talk to people that you know. Make it known that you are creating this platform where you want to make a difference somehow and find your way through that. And that's why definitely we aren't just talking about anymore leaving a legacy for our future as adults, but for our children and children of the future. And so the whole idea of everything that we're doing today is to really make sure that we have enough for future generations. And so this is just one avenue where if anyone out there wants to get involved, we're planning to hopefully protect 30% of our lands and our seas through this initiative in Southeast Asia. And you can go through our different social media platforms as well to be able to see like all the different things that we're doing and how you yourself can also get involved. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tasha. There is so much to relate with personally, including the human center design as a pivot to problem solving. Our final presenter is a painter, muralist, and natural dyer from Manila. Through her dyeing studio, Tagum Taguan, Bicolano for Indigo Keeper. She conducts virtual workshops on indigo dyeing and makes unique patterns on fabric with Philippine indigo called tagum or malatayong, sourced from various communities all over the Philippines. As an advocate for the revival of natural dyes, she collaborates with local nonprofit organizations, designers, and creatives to bring public awareness and appreciation for the traditional craft especially its sustainable and eco-friendly practices. Let's all welcome artist, advocate, and another fellow CIP alumni, Iana Ofracio. Hello, Iana.
Hi, everybody. Sorry for that. So let me get back to my screen share. Thank you so much, Kay. Um, good evening to everyone. And oops. Here, I'll have a quick presentation to share with you of what I do. Right, so yes, as Kay said, Tagum is Bicolano for Indigo and Taguan is Tagalog for Keeper. So in many ways, um, I consider myself an Indigo Keeper. And um, I started um, dyeing textiles about five years ago because I fell in love with the endless designs and colors you can produce on fabric. So these were produced using synthetic dyes or what we call yung jobos. <laughs> and that way back in 2016, I wanted to pursue this craft for the long haul, but by only using synthetic dyes, my process was really not sustainable. So I did some experiments on natural dyes um, with avocado first, and then black beans, and then turmeric. Um, because uh, upon research, we all know that textile dyeing in general consumes a lot of water. And the majority of this water is returned to nature as toxic waste. Man, they contain residual dyes and hazardous chemicals that pollute our water systems and pose dangers to plant, animal, and even human life since it may promote carcinogenicity. And enter the indigo plant. With a local name, Tagung or Malatayung, and scientific name, Indigofera tinctoria, it is a shrubby herbaceous plant that grows from one to two meters high. They are mainly found in the communities of Abra, Mindoro, Quezon, Palawan, Bukidnon, and Rizal. Its leaves are oval shaped and are arranged symmetrically like the malungay or moringa plant. In agriculture, it is a soil improving ground cover, but in the arts, it is a plant that yields a wide variety of rich blue hues that have long been in use in our traditional Philippine fabrics. So after I transitioned into using Philippine indigo, I also began sharing what I know through workshops and seminars which in turn brought me closer to NGOs and collectives that shared the same advocacy as me. And our, that advocacy is essentially the revival of local and indigenous practices, crafts, and industries through education, experience, and conversation. I was fortunate enough to work with the Philippine Textile Research Institute, or the PTRI, and the Non-Timber Forest Products Exchange Program, or NTFPEP, through their marketing arm, Custom Made Craft Center, or CMCC, I was able to pursue my passion of creating beautiful patterns on fabric while complementing the timeless traditions of our cultural communities. Together, through local textile fairs and trade shows, we got to showcase products to the public that were not only masterfully made, but significantly empowered forest-dependent communities to utilize and manage their forest resources in a sustainable manner. Our collaborations aim to highlight that it is in indigenous communities that the traditional Filipino arts remain intact and passed down to future generations. And so as you can see here, some shots from our communities. They do all the harvesting, planting, I planting, harvesting, processing, and uh, and I help in the design and um, pattern making process of the natural dyes on fabric. So it's truly a wonderful and challenging journey to bring back natural dyes into the spotlight. Since the pandemic has brought more awareness of eco-conscious lifestyle choices to the public. And but they have now a growing interest in raw, organic, and slow-made products. Natural Indigo is enjoying a bit of a rebirth 
especially in the interior design and sustainable fashion circles. So while indigo dyeing is complex, unlike the other natural dyes, I believe that as we learn and practice indigo dyeing, we grow more appreciative of its significance in our culture and history. And so with that, I invite you all, especially to our youth, to explore and practice responsible natural dyeing as one of the many creative and sustainable ways we can add our voice to the fight against climate change. Tagum Taguan Dying Studio is a space for active participation. And I'd be very glad to work and collaborate with anyone, maybe um, the designers, artists, ev everybody. I'm so excited to work with anyone who's willing to learn more about the craft of natural indigo dyeing. So I welcome the creative Filipino youth and urge you to sign the global youth letter so that you can add your voice and to help make our future bluer and brighter. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Bluer and brighter, I love that, Iana. See, even as a creative, there's so many ways for you to help mitigate or move people to consider your, their actions with regards to climate crisis. If you want to link up with, ya with Iana, be sure to tag her. Um, when you make a comment on Facebook or when you uh, give your questions out here in the chat box right under the video. So Yana, there might be a couple of questions or link ups for you, get ready for that, okay? It is impossible to have seen and heard all of our guests tonight and not feel the fire of inspiration for what they do and consequently what we can do in our own context. We see that we still have some time. Do we have time for maybe a couple of questions directed to our live speakers? Shall we just field maybe one or two questions? Let me see. Okay, we have people asking about how they want to link up. Well, again, in case you missed it, Tag the organization or the speaker that you'd like to connect to and our team, both from RDB and from the British Council will be on it. Expect an email or a direct message sometime between this evening or the next few days. And um, if you feel like you need advice on how to start your own community um, movement, how to galvanize people, feel free to ask away. Okay, let me see if there are any questions there. Okay. Well, in any case, you can just send them in and you will get the answers from our speakers themselves. Okay, this ends our showcase, but we still have one more award to give to our Voices for Climate Action entry. Our second batch of awardees are First is John Robert Metran with his artwork, Man to Nature, Nature to Man. You can see it flashed here on your screen. According to John Robert, his artwork expresses the importance of balance. Sustainability, after all, is consistent balance in nature and in ourselves. So. Congratulations, John Robert. Our second winner is Gal Alburo with his beautiful, beautiful poem, Iluha Mo. Lumuha ka kabundukan, makasakaling pag-asay lumutang sa dibdib mong nagbago ang kulay. Wala man akong magawa sa singwang tumitigil sa iyong paghinga. Sasabayan kita, sige yung luha. Ah, ihahalik na lang kita kay Bathala. Nang luntian mo ay sumibol sa bawat diwa. Ito'y pangarap sa muling pagkikita. Congratulations to our winners. RDB APAC will be reaching out to you to make sure that you get your tokens. Thank you very much. You can read about the Global Youth Letter through the link in the chat box right now. Again, in the comments section if you're watching us on Facebook. 
we are sharing both the global version and the Philippines version. It also helps to make an informed decision. So if you want to read the full research report, here is the link in the chat box. As a treat, for those who sign the Global Youth Letter, you also have a chance to receive local, artisanal, and bamboo-crafted products. During the, later, the letter reading, sorry, we shared a link in the chat for you to sign the GYL. Our team will either flash it or put it back in our chat box now. Just click the link shared in the chat box and sign the GYL. To qualify for the tokens, you need to do three things. First, sign, then screenshot, then upload. First, click the link in the chat right now. This allows you to sign the Global Youth Letter. When you are led to the confirmation page, do screenshot that on your mobile or your tablet or computers or whatever device you are watching us in. Then click the upload link shared in the chat and in the comment section, or scan the QR being flashed on your screen and upload your screenshot. That tells us that you are you have signed the Global Youth Letter and are therefore qualified to be entered in the raffle. Randomly selected winners will receive the following tokens from our partner, RDB APAC. One month mobile data package, that's one whole month very re relevant to this time and bamboo made artisanal products from our partners you saw how beautiful the items that yana and emmy and our friends from the manobo manobo region have um made you'll be getting one of those don't forget that you have only until midnight of today 22nd of october to sign the letter so do it now to further assist you with the process, Ali Saguin will show you how in this video. It's letter. letter. Every voice matters, so add your voice. Add your voice. Add your voice. Add their voice. Global Youth Letter. To the Global Youth Letter. Global Youth Letter. Global Youth Letter. The Global Youth Letter. To the Global Youth Letter. Alright, so guys, we're gonna see this is super simple, and I'm gonna answer it with you guys. So I believe in the chat, they're gonna be sharing as well the link and the three hashtags that we're going to be having. So it's very simple. You click the link and you'll see the simple form over here. And you guys will see how fast it is to do and how simple it is. So all of the little also over here, we see, all right, just a couple of seconds. Let's see how long it's gonna take. So you guys will be able to share. And it's not, if you see here, it's not just us in the Philippines who's going to be part of it. It's also people from all over the world. So here, I'll also put a comment or thought. So I believe cross-sectoral collective action is the best way to combat climate action. So whatever you guys want to put, it indicates 15 words max. And then here, am I? 35 years and under, yes, I am so far. Um, and over here, if you guys would like to subscribe to the newsletter, you guys can click it over there. So it's just as simple as that, subscribe, and there you go. So that's how simple it is. I hope that you guys can also join us. They're able to share it in the chat, very simple. And let's make sure to really raise our voice and to add our voice to the Global Youth Letter. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I hope you all got that. If you have any questions, again, feel free to throw it out in the chat. Our team is watching and will be happy to assist you. Our speakers today come from different backgrounds and face equally complex and evolving issues related to community agency and climate. What they have shown us is how there is unity and diversity and human-centric methods to work together for sustainable solutions in small but snowballing to major scales. Some reminders before we officially close. Now we will be emailing the feedback form. You registered with an email, so please check in with that. 
um, and answer the brief survey. It's very quick, takes only a few minutes. This helps us improve our events, especially for future sessions. And if you haven't already, please follow our British Council social media channels. That's at PH British on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And use the hashtags, the climate connection, that's one word without uh, space. And COP26, that's Charlie, Oscar, Papa, two, six, when you post about the event. We're flashing again the three steps on how you can be part of the raffle and how you can sign the Global Youth Letter. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We'd like to thank our speakers, partners, and participants once again for sharing your stories and positive energy in the hopes that little fires of inspiration, and I'm seeing it in the chat right now, and positive change are lighting up in hearts all over the country. This ends our Add Your Voice series. And once again, this is Kay Batikin. Don't forget to add your voice and sign if you did not already do so a while ago. Let's click, screenshot, and upload. Have a great evening and have a wonderful weekend, everyone. <laughs>